we also uh, have is we have something that is unique uh, to Islamic centers and organization, and that is uh, the Islamic Centers Cooperative Fund, uh, in which uh, you know centers and Islamic organizations can uh, park their money or invest their money with us, and um, and it's safe in in many. Uh, it's safe in the sense that we have a takafah concept that protects the principal and whatever accumulated earnings that come about. And, um, you know, it's also liquid, which means that, uh, you know, if you were to invest the money today and you needed it tomorrow, all you need to do is just call us or send us a, a withdrawal form and you would be able to get the money within the same day or, or thereabout. So uh, it is really something that I, I, I urge all Islamic Center to take advantage of it because I know saving is discipline and it requires that discipline in order to save for a rainy day, such as a day that we are having right now, where um, we don't have access to, to donations and Islamic centers are in need of funds uh, to maintain operations. Um, that's, that's basically a background about, uh, about NIT. And let me begin by uh, talking about um, <coughs> the PP. Um, I believe that most, most Islamic organizations or uh, Islamic centers who have applied uh, for the PPP loan have already received it. If you have not received it, I know that it's, uh, uh, the guidance is not, is not very clear as to whether um, some banks are still accepting um, applications, uh, but many are not. Um, if you have not applied, I would urge you to apply just in case uh, a new legislation may come about uh, to fund um, whatever um, applications that have not been funded. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, secondly, I think that you have to also understand that when you apply for this loan, you made a statement or you certified that current economic uncertainty makes this loan necessary, necessary to support the ongoing operations of your application. So it's very important that, and they're gonna make you sign that statement again. Um, I believe most organizations will meet that criteria and will meet that certification, but that is something that you need to check with your legal team to assure that you actually meet that criteria. Um, <clears throat> things to know about the loan forgiveness. Uh, borrowers who receive the loan from the SBA uh, have to, would have their loan forgiven if they use the money for the designated expenses. Uh, as you recall, uh, you know, anybody who was part of the application, they remember that they made an average of the payroll, monthly payroll for the last 12 months. And then they took that number and, the, and multiplied it by two and a half. Uh, the, the half of the 25% that they actually allowed for that was for to pay for rent, for um, um, mortgage interest, mortgage payments, uh, for utilities, for that. But the majority, 75% of that money, had to go uh, to pay for um, uh, to, to pay for uh, payroll. My battery is running low, so I need to charge it. I am sorry, but uh, let me just. Um, <clears throat> So what, we, uh, what you need to do is to make sure that the minute you receive the money, once you receive the funds, that's when the, when the, um, the clock begins. You have to spend within eight weeks the entire money or just about most of the money that you receive through the PPP loan. Uh, so 75% of it should go to the payroll. The other 25% should pay for um, other expenses. Now, what is... What is uh, payroll? I mean, you know, when you say payroll, what is it? Um, payroll is salaries, wages, uh, cash tips or equivalents, payment for regular leave of absence, a dismissal or separation of, co of compensation, group health insurance, group health insurance, whatever you pay for group health insurance is also part of um, payroll. Retirement benefits uh, payments. So if you have uh, many many centers or many organizations may have may actually uh, pay three to four to five percent uh, as a way of helping uh, retirement. So for your own retirement, so don't wait till the end of the year to make that payment. Try to at least prorate that payment uh, up to the June 30th and pay it, and and uh, that will also be included 
in um, in what we call um, uh, wages and uh, payroll payroll. Uh, also, payroll taxes, um, not the withholdings, not the withholdings, but the payroll taxes, such and unemployment taxes, disability taxes, uh, state taxes, whatever taxes that you pay as an employer, not as an employee, as an employer, will also fit into that classification. Uh, vacation pay. Parental, you know, um, a pay, family, medical, or sick leave, all of that would qualify as wages. So just keep in, keep in mind that initially they actually had other uh, um, items into, into the payroll, but they have uh, the new guidance changed and they limited to what I just talked about. You have to maintain, by the way, 75% of the total amount of whatever you receive in terms of a loan to be paid for um, wages. Um, people, by the way, uh, who have, you know, there is a misconception that if you have an employee who's making over $100,000, uh, they are not qualified. They do qualify. The first $100,000 of that, of the, of the um, salary of that person qualifies. Anything above 100,000 does not qualify. So just be aware of that so that you don't make a mistake of excluding uh, some people who are the higher, you know, higher paid uh, over $100,000. So just be careful with that one. Um, <clears throat> the other expenses, the other forgivable expenses, the 25% of that loan that you receive, uh, mortgage interest, if the mortgage was signed before February 15, 2020, because they don't want you to say, okay, I, I just uh, entered into, a, into an, a new mortgage after February 15th and then uh, take those expenses. So that you have to make sure that it's anything that you uh, pay in terms of rent or utilities or mortgage interest is for something that you were obligated to do or obligated to pay prior to February 15th, uh, 2020. Um, the time period covered. It's, it's very critical. It's very critical that you understand that you have eight weeks in which to basically spend the money. So if you have an example, if you have payroll, if you have a payroll that uh, you, know, you pay on, May on, on June 1st or July 1st, and you have to advance it by a few days in order to make sure that it fits into the eight weeks, do it. The same thing with also with, with your um, rental payments, with your mortgage payments, with whatever payments. Make sure that you try to pay whatever, you know, applicable for two months. It's basically for two months, but you, you don't want to be paying for a month in the following month in which you cannot say, I paid it to during those um, eight weeks. Brother Salah. I think he's lo he lost his connection. Yeah, we are getting in touch with him. Okay. Hello. Assalamu Yeah, the, the computer just <laughs> grabbed out on me. Uh, am I am I on now? You're you're on in your. Uh, okay. Loud and okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Um, anyhow, so um, the most important thing is that once you have met the criteria, which which you had initially met when you applied for it, you basically pay all those expenses that you said that you would pay. Now. When you apply for the loan, you have to make the certification one more time that you basically needed this money, and that should be easy enough. The second thing that you should also provide is that you need to provide payroll reports <coughs> for all that, that time period. 
you have to, the, the tax filings you have to provide, provide, you may even have to provide cancel checks, but we don't, we don't know if, if that's gonna be the case. Uh, for the rent and for the utilities, you know, for the rent, you probably have to provide the lease. If you have uh, interest payments, you have to provide the documents that you show that. So all of that, you need to make sure that you provide it uh, at the time of, uh, at the time of, you know, applying for uh, forgiveness. So all these documents would be necessary because that's, that's what the bank will be relying on. So you need to make sure that that happens. Um, as far as, yeah, okay. Now, uh, in terms of determining the number of full-time employees and equivalent employees, uh, basically a lot of people may have uh, part-timers. I don't know if Islamic centers have a lot of part-timers, but if you have part-time employees, what you need to do is you say if each, if you have three employees who are working or four employees who are working 20 hours, 20 hours a week, uh, you would add up the hours and you divide by 40 and you come up with what we call um, a full-time equivalent employee. Uh, and that's how you determine that you basically maintained, maintained your, um, your payroll based on the previous uh, circumstances that you had prior to February 15th. Because one thing that they don't want you to do, uh, the reason that they gave these loans is to make sure that you retain your employees. So they want to make sure that you retain most of your employees, um, even if you had furloughed some of them. If you had furloughed or, uh, or basically terminated some employees, you can hire them before June 30th and potentially take a credit for um, payments to them um, during, uh, during that time. That area is not very clear as to whether you take you can take a credit for payments that would have been made to that individual, or is it a payments that you would make after June thirtieth? But that's a, that's a clarification that I have not been able to uh, to arrive at yet. But inshallah, I will try to clear it up somehow and get back to you on this. Um, now, if they were to say to you, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, on this particular. Um, uh, screen here. It's basically I was talking about it. The fact that you may have to make an adjustment, the timing of your payroll date to accommodate uh, the pay cycles, because you want to make sure that all your payments for the uh, for the eight in the, within the eight weeks are paid within those eight weeks, um, and you do not want um, money to be paid for those eight weeks in in the ninth week, because they, then uh, the SBA or the bank may say it does not it does not meet the requirement. So just be, be cognizant of that and just be careful uh, to make sure it's paid within those eight weeks. Uh, now, if, you, if somehow uh, you make the application and they don't, um, they don't forgive you, um, you basically can appeal and uh, try again and, sh and try to convince the bank because the bank is basically, uh, they are the catalyst, but they are also the liaison between you and the SBA and they can, they can go back and, and uh, redo things to, in hope of, uh, in hope of getting, getting you approval for um, <clears throat> forgiveness. If they don't forgive, God forbid, um, your outstanding balance will continue to accrue at 1% uh, for the remainder of two year period. So um, of course we don't wanna be dealing with interest and inshallah that uh, if you follow the rules and you are careful in the way you do things, uh, you should be able to get forgiveness um, and not have to go and make it into a loan and pay any interest, inshallah. Um, I'm ready here to answer any questions if you have any uh, at this point. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I have a question. Um, if let's say, so the eight week is from the day you get the money or from the approval date? No, from the date you get the money in the bank. Jazakallah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, if I can ask this question of your brother Salah, if you get this money, uh, well, let me start. It's my understanding that whatever you spend has to be, uh, you have to spend it by June 30th. Is that correct? Yes. So if you get your money like, like today, we're less than eight weeks from June 30th, then it is important that whatever that money is, that you would spend it uh, before June 30th 
And no, no, me, the June the June thirtieth is for uh, bringing back uh, furloughed employees or terminated employees. But you actually have eight weeks from the time that you receive the funds into your bank account. Okay. Okay. But the, the June thirtieth, just just again, the June thirtieth is if you have terminated or furloughed some employees, you need to bring them back before June before June thirtieth. Assalamu alaikum. Can I make a comment now? Yes. Yes. Jazakallah khair. You know, I attended another uh, webinar, and just for the benefit of the uh, audience, I think uh, on the payroll issue, only those people who who uh, receive W-2 form are qualified. Because if you have part-time employees like we do, and you just pay them cash or you pay them by check, and you issue 1099, then those, my, to my understanding, they're not qualified. Can you please yeah, shed 10, some light 10, on 90, that? 1099, 1099 employees are not, are not qualified. Uh, only the people who are on the payroll. But the issue is that you have a lot of people who have part-timers that they pay out of the payroll. Um, the other ones, when you have, when you say 1099, usually the, the, the IRS looks at them as subcontractors um, or as independent contractors. So they don't even look at them as employees. Yes, thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. We have a, a question in the chat is, can you, uh, to the extent we're getting, um, they get towards the end of the, the their eight week cycle, can they pay like a, a month and a half salary to cover the that person? Uh, not because they're gonna they're gonna calculate the number uh, how much you should have paid them. Uh, so if if you pay it one one and a half times, do it, um, you know, and then leave it up to the bank or to the SBA to disqualify that portion if they choose to. Uh, they may not ninety percent of the chance. I don't think they would disqualify it. But just in case, if they do disqualify it, uh, at least you, you've tried. What about uh, a, a situation, you know, for those that have small businesses um, and where the owner uh, is compensated? Does it, would that owner have to be a W-2 employee in order to qualify for PPE? Or, and uh, another scenario that was raised is what if it's like a, a LLC and, and they just get a distribution? of uh, as their compensation well if if the employee is is say an llc owner um or, or participant you know or, or partner um and they don't have and they don't have uh, a w2 they can apply as uh, an, a, a, under a different format uh, which uh, which they can calculate how much money they actually lost during that time period and all that but uh, you know the, the what, what we're trying to do here is only um talk about uh, organizations and basically Islamic centers. But yeah, they, you know, uh, subcontractors, they, can, they have the option of, of applying for uh, the PPV loan uh, under a different, different set of circumstances, or they can use unemployment benefits as a way of, um, you know, if, if that pays more, more money, uh, they can probably use the unemployment uh, side of it. Because anybody with a 1099, uh, the new rules allowed them uh, $600, uh, you know, at least from the federal government. I don't know how much would be the state match uh, as far as um, the unemployment part of it, uh, but at least they would be getting $600 from the federal government. And that's actually creating a problem for a lot of businesses because uh, with the 600 plus the amount of money that they get from the state, uh, a lot of people are not coming back to work uh, because of the fact that they are making more money um, by collecting unemployment rather than going back to work. Correct. So that my, that's a good good question, right? So good comment, actually. So can we hire new employees then to do the job? If you hire new employees as a replacement, as a replacement of that employee that you furloughed, yes. Okay. There's some concern about uh, how we can improve that certification. Would uh, showing the decline in donations to the masjid, would that qualify? Or what would be uh, some points that you would recommend in terms to, to us uh, to best uh, justify that uh, we were in a critical financial situation, but for this loan? 
Uh, yeah, this is this is an issue of uh, legal, uh, really, uh, of a lawyer that needs to sh shed some light on it. But if you can show that, you know, for all, most Islamic centers, they live off of donations. So you can actually substantiate that your donations are not coming and you, you, you know, uh, the uncertainty of the coronavirus, uh, you know, going into the, potentially to the end of the year, uh, you would be actually deprived of being able to operate. So I think that there is a, a good justification for that certification. Um, you know, centers that may have an endowment of say $5 million or $10 million, and they're applying for this, uh, you know, that becomes a, a gray area where I think that you need, probably need to talk to a, a lawyer uh, and find out because uh, this certification, by the way, if, if the SBA uh, assumes that you actually did it in bad, in, in, not in, in good faith, um, there are penalties of almost $250,000 plus even jail time. So it's a, it's a very, very severe uh, consequence uh, for, uh, say, misleading or certifying in an um, untruthful way. Um, when making this application, is uh, it, when, it, just for clarity, to the extent that you uh, don't fully, uh, 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 you cannot substantiate your accreditation, or uh, uh, would it be just, uh, would you be just paying the interest? Now you just shared about the, the these potential penalties. How is it? Uh, well, let, let me let me re redraw that. Uh, withdraw the question and go this way. To the extent that you don't spend all the money within this time period, uh, any money that's not left over would that have to be returned? Uh, you, you either return it, and there is no penalty for prepayment, or you extend it as a loan if you feel that you need the money and you have to operate. You know, like if you have ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and you feel that uh, any, any center that needs it and says, I, I need the money, I'm not getting any donation, uh, they may want to choose to have it as a regular loan and pay the 1%, uh, you know, as far as uh, whether it's halal or haram, that's something that uh, shiuch have to, uh, to get involved with. And would that interest uh, accrue from the date of payment or, or at the end, would it start accruing at the end of the eight-week period or if you know? Uh, I, I do not know, but I think it, it begins with, uh, you know, after the eight weeks, um, you know, and that's something that uh, uh, we can check into to make sure that um, it, it's only 1%, so it's a very small amount. It's insignificant, um, you know, compared to the loan. And then uh, once again, if you could just clarify this, because there, there's a number of questions about how, uh, whether an independent contractor uh, would qualify for a PP uh, uh, a payroll protection uh, loan. Could yeah, you, uh, independent I, contractors can apply on their own for the PPP, or they can go to the uh, um, you know for the unemployment and get that six hundred dollars plus whatever the state pays in terms of unemployment uh, benefits. Uh, before the initial guidance was that if you have people on uh, ten ninety nine you can actually include him in the payroll. Uh, but they changed the guidance and they said, no, they changed it and they said, no, you cannot have 1099s um, you know, as part of your payroll. And therefore, you know, anybody on 1099, they have to apply on their own for the PPP or uh, choose the unemployment option. If, um, if you have, if someone had an employee who, because of the financial situation of the masjid, deferred salary from a previous year, but the understanding is that that money would still be paid. Could that sum at all be used to pay that back uh, past due salary? I I would, you know, if it was me, I would definitely pay it and let them decide if they want to disqualify it. Uh, and I think that there will not be as, uh, you know, on larger loans, like uh, what Mnuchin said, on the larger loans, they will actually, you know, have, um, they will be investigated and thoroughly uh, checked out. But loans uh, less than uh, $2 million, um, I think they're gonna be very lenient with. Um, and uh, uh, the smaller the loan, the, the less, uh, um, you know, the less of a, 
scrutiny, I guess, super scrutiny and, and supervision that will take place uh, as a consequence. Okay. Um, one By the way, anybody who, you know, I, I, of course, this is all not for profit, so there is no tax consequences, but for private companies, companies that are private, meaning that you, you have uh, some Islamic centers that have uh, other organizations that are for profit, um, any, uh, any money that you spend out of the PPP is not tax deductible. So that just, you know, so you cannot, you cannot take the money and also deduct the expenses. Those are considered to be non-expenses. Okay, but uh, uh, one one of our uh, members in the audience had spoken to their bank, and the bank had indicated that the interest would start to accrue from December of this year, and all the loan must be paid in full by June, uh, twenty twenty one. Uh, and I, uh, I mean, two I, years. They give you yeah. two years. Okay, so to the extent that this is. Uh, what the position that a bank is taking, are they in essence altering the terms and, and is that possible or is that uh, uh, permitted? No, they, they, cannot the alter, they cannot change the terms. The terms are set by the SBA uh, and Mnuchin, Mnuchin by the way has, uh, has was given by, you know, by the legislation, uh, was given the authority to change terms and conditions of this uh, PPP thing. Um, he's the only one who is allowed to do that, Secretary of uh, Treasury. What, uh, now, you, you mentioned about the, the loan forgiveness. Uh, uh, there's an application that has to be filed? Uh, yeah, there has, you have to apply for, for a forgiveness. It's not, it's not automatic. All right. And where do, do you know where, we, where they would, to the extent uh, that they need to get this application, would, would that be from the bank where they made the loan, it's, or is this it's, a? It's the same bank that you. Yeah, it's the same bank that you've done the. You know, you applied the initially for the PPP. And is there a, a deadline by which this application needs to be filed to ensure we would secure the forgiveness? Uh, I do not know yet, but I'm just saying. I mean, I think that we all Islamic centers and organizations should begin to have a a special journal of all the expenses associated with the PPP and make sure that it's ready so that the minute you have, the minute they big, uh, open up the process, you apply. Um, because it's, it's critical, it's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, happens when a first come first serve basis and you wanna be the first one to, to apply. So you, you encourage the application like <laughs> right at the end of the eight weeks then? I mean, I, I would say that just to be safe, um, you know, uh, I would apply first, you know, why wait? All right, and then, uh, so there, there was a question in the audience about, the, there, and then going to the very uh, uh, heart of this webinar, that there is uh, some information that they have received that this loan, the interest is not forgivable. Um, I, I guess I do not, if, you, if you could answer this question, what actually is being forgiven? It's the interest, the loan, interest and the loan. So to make that if, clear for if, the audience. If, if the loan is forgiven, I believe that the interest will be forgiven. Um, if it's not forgiven, then it, it becomes a loan and then that interest accrues. Uh, that's my understanding, but um, it, could be, it could be different. I, um, I will, we will try to check, you know, I mean, those are questions that if we, if we didn't answer them fully, we can check into it and, and uh, you know, let you know, inshallah, and you can uh, make sure that everybody's aware of the answers. So uh, I, I guess now, I mean, <clears throat> is it still time to make applications for this PPE uh, uh, loan? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I went yeah. to Chase to, to, uh, to ask for a, uh, if uh, somebody can apply and they said they're not taking applications, but I believe that you can still take applications. You need to check with, um, with the SBA and all that. And I would, I would encourage anybody that didn't apply to apply because just in case uh, there will be a, a, a further legislations or further relief um, coming down the line from Congress. So um, you never know. Because you remember the first, uh, we applied, you know, I applied maybe two, three days into a, um, uh, after they open the application process, 
and uh, fund, funds were, were basically gone. So it was the second, uh, the second funding that made, made us, um, allowed us to get our money. All right. Um, one, uh, this is not a question and, and on the chat, but uh, from a number of our members have expressed difficulty, particularly if they're banking with a large bank like Chase, where the applications uh, are were being delayed or telling them they, um, in essence, the runaround in terms of actually fi uh, filing the application. Do you have any recommendations on how to address that particular problem? Uh, I think smaller banks are more receptive, are more receptive to to um, uh, to process the applications based on a priority basis. I think some of the bigger banks, uh, they were you know they were conniving in the sense that they probably gave re uh, ref uh, preference uh, to companies that they are they have dealings with or they have loans with, and you know because. And there was talk about it, you know, and, and the Congress was supposed to investigate this, uh, that they were given um, preferences to certain uh, clientele. Um, so I think maybe smaller banks or medium-sized banks uh, are much better because they don't have the same kind of sophistication that the larger banks have uh, in terms of being able to sort out uh, which, you know, which uh, clients should be given a preference. And then I, I, I would, the question was asked, if you could just review once again, please, what are those non-wage uh, expenses that would qualify? I mean, because there's, there's this thought that it, is it, it's not just limited to utilities, is that correct? It's, you know, you have utilities, if you have, uh, you know, any expense associated with maintaining the center, I would consider that to be under the uh, utilities. So, um, you know, electric, uh, telephone, uh, uh, do, doing uh, work outside the, you know. Uh, so if you had landscaping, the, uh, you know, any, what yeah, about, what, uh, let me ask this question. Some of them uh, may have incurred some maintenance, major, major, major maintenance expenses, like a whole a roof had to be patched or uh, a, a, a furnace had to be repaired. Now those, I know it draws the line between what's a, an improvement versus an expense. Is there, is there any guidance on that? There's, there's no guidance, but I would still include it. But you, you have to understand, it's only limited to 25% of the total amount of the loan. So if you, if you already calculated it the right way when you did the initial application, most likely you don't have enough money to cover those expenses. You will only have enough money for the payroll and whatever you've already told them that you were going to spend it on. So um, hopefully you included, you know, when they when they applied, hopefully they included all uh, utility items um, because some of them may not even think of, you know, they probably just included heating or air conditioning or or just the lights. So you know, so hopefully they included all of that, um, you know, and that also includes internet expense, you know, anything that has to do with the operation of, of the center would be considered utilities. And uh, an, another follow-up question, I know you, you've, can't, you've answered it, but just to clarify for uh, one of the members of the audience, is the, this forgiveness process any different for those that would uh, apply as a, 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 who is an independent contractor? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not familiar with that, you know, as I said, Independent contractors, I, di I really did not do research on that one. I only, you know, my research and my, um, you know, I restrict my, my knowledge to the only Islamic centers and Islamic, you know, not-for-profit organizations. So, um, but I know that it, uh, you know, I think that the process should be the same. Uh, basically, you, you, told, you know, you have to say, you, you told me that you're going to do this. Did you do it according to what you said? If you did, then it will be forgiven. If it's not, it will not. All right, I think we have one more here. I'm just checking here. All right, uh, if you can pro provide a little, uh, just to uh, once again review and clarify, when you, that two and a half times uh, the the guy the things that you are using to calculate that is it 
uh, let's say two months salary, and then a half a, a equivalent of a half a month salary, but that's only for that's intended to cover these extraordinary uh, other operational expenses such as utilities, or is it that you're covering two and a half months of salary? No, no, you're not covering two and a half months of salary. You're covering two months of salary, and you're covering, uh, you know, twenty-five percent. Uh, of the PPV loan should be going to cover utilities and expenses associated with that, and mortgage payments, rental payments, anything of that sort. So the way the way it's calculated initially when you did the application is you took um, you took the, your entire expense for the year on the mortgage. I mean, not on the mortgage on the on the payroll, and then you divided by twelve. So that gave you an average average month. The average month you multiplied by two and a half. Uh, so it's not, it's not giving you two and a half for the payroll. It's giving you two for the payroll and you're giving you the half for, doing, for, uh, for paying uh, rental expenses, mortgage payments, uh, utilities, et cetera. Uh, Is it clear? No, that, thank you. No, that, that clarified it. I think th there was some misunderstanding about that. I, I don't know if there's any other question. I'm checking the chat, but I... I don't see any other. If you, if I've missed it, please uh, raise your hand, and and we would acknowledge you. Um, uh, if not, um, inshallah, we would uh, uh, bring this this webinar uh, to a close. I I think we've all benefited. I think you've clarified a number of uh, misunderstandings that we had. We know we got a, a, a from the time we get the money, we got eight weeks to spend it. 75% of it has to go to payroll, and that other 25% should be among those expenses we indicated in our original application. And yeah. the other thing which is critical is that we keep, as you say, a, dirt, a daily journal or a, a regular journal, um, memorializing all these expenses, having proof and copies, whether it's a 941, cancel checks if they're available uh, to verify so you, once you make an application, and that application we should seek from our, our lender, that we can assure ourselves or better assure a, that the, this loan uh, and, inshallah, and the interest will be forgiven. Is that a good summary, I would ask? Excellent summary, brother. Excellent summary. Alhamdulillah. 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 All right. Well, uh, uh, on behalf of the uh, Council of Islamic Organizations, we thank you for joining us. We hope the information as uh, we provided, as uh, Brother Salah shared with you, has been helpful. Uh, once again, as he he's cautioned you and uh, or advised you, and we would advise you as well. You, this is a matter you should uh, take a moment, consult with your your uh, with a, a counsel or your accountant to make sure that you can take full advantage of this federal program that's designed to help us during this critical. Uh, time uh, brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, with that, uh, 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 Brother Ashad, if you want to make uh, any closing remarks to the, uh, before we close, please. Just a lot for this time, and uh, this was very relevant uh, topic for us. Uh, do the um, in, inshallah, there will be more to come. Uh, the COGC is making an attempt uh, to, uh, to bring to our community the relevant topic and, and uh, uh, webinars. Uh, so this will benefit our, our community. Um, so please stay tuned to these webinars and uh, our communication. Uh, if you need a copy of this presentation, please make sure that you uh, give your email address. Uh, we will share that uh, presentation with you. Um, we also uh, continue to have the program um, of daily tafsir on C Chicago uh, CIGC .live. Um So if you're not on it, please subscribe and you can listen to the tafsirs every day um, and support our work. Uh, support our work with your donation in this uh, month of Ramadan. And uh, this uh, keep us going and we appreciate uh, your support, your generosity uh, in this Ramadan. So um, I encourage one who has benefited. Uh, please, uh, uh, you know, remember us in your duas and inshallah remember us in, in your time of your support in the donation. 
So with that, uh, I conclude and I thank Brother Salah for coming and taking time uh, and his busy schedule to share with us a very important topic. Um, inshallah, more to come. As things get available to us, we will be more than happy to bring and share with our community. So Jazakallah Khair, thank you so much for mine. Jazakumullah Khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa Assalamu alaikum. Hmm. 